Welcome to How to Build an Aluminum Foundry, where we'll go over the steps on how to build a foundry for melting aluminum. Please be aware that this is dangerous, so you should take all precautions. This foundry is fired by charcoal. It's very lightweight and it melts aluminum pretty quickly, about 15 minutes. Here is a list of everything you're going to need to do this project. A six gallon bucket, a one and a half inch PVC adapter thread to slip, a six inch long iron pipe inch and a half in diameter, a 10 quart plastic bucket, 15 pounds of plaster of Paris, some coarse vermiculite or perlite, two two inch U-bolts, and a five gallon plastic bucket. I purchased all these items at Lowe's except for the vermiculite. The first thing we're going to do is fill the six gallon bucket completely full with water. Then we're going to push the 10 quart bucket down into the water and we're doing this to displace 10 quarts of water. This seems like an odd step but you'll understand why we're doing it in a minute. Once we've displaced the water using the 10, ga 10 quart bucket we're going to measure the remaining water. This will tell us exactly how much dry mix we will need to make to fill the bucket. So here I've measured 10 quarts and using the remaining water I can see that I've got 15 quarts of dry mix that I need to mix up. Now that I know how much dry mix to mix up I dry off all of my buckets and I start measuring the dry mix out. I'll use five quarts of coarse perlite or vermiculite and I'll add that to the five gallon plastic bucket. Then I will add ten quarts of plaster of Paris to the mix and I'll mix it up while it's still dry. Whenever pouring and mixing dry material it's a good idea to wear a mask so you don't breathe in the dust. Uh, you'll add the two materials together and mix them using a stirrer and you need to mix them well. After the material is well mixed it's time to prepare the 10 quart bucket so it can be used for the mold for the inner part of our foundry. We're going to cut the handles off this 10 quart bucket with a razor knife being careful not to gouge it um, and we'll do this because we want the inside of our foundry to be nice and smooth. We'll be mixing the plaster in our six gallon bucket so we're going to add water to our six gallon bucket. You're going to use the same amount of water as you used plaster of Paris. In this case it was 10 quarts. Uh, we're going to add the dry mix slowly and we're not going to mix it because when you mix plaster of Paris it's, it activates it and it starts to harden almost immediately. So the longer you can go without mixing it, the longer your cure time will be. Uh, after it's soaked, you can start mixing. But as, remember, as soon as you start mixing, the cure time begins. Next, I sprayed the bucket down with Fantastic Cleaner, uh, hoping it was going to keep it from sticking. I'm not sure it actually worked, but I did it anyways. Uh, then we will press the 10 quart bucket down into the plaster mix uh, and we press it down to start with at an angle to make sure that the air escapes from underneath it. Press the 10 quart bucket down until it's even with the plaster. This step is tricky. Uh, I added water to the 10 quart bucket for weight and then I had to hold the bucket in place for a couple minutes until the plaster started to set. Make sure that the bucket is in the center because once it starts to set, it'll be too late to move it. Once the plaster is dry, you can start removing the 10 quart bucket. The 10 quart bucket will probably not survive because you really have to pry on it to get it out. Uh, but be careful, take your time in this step because you don't want to crack your plaster, which is not probably fully cured at this point. After prying with a screwdriver and my hands for a while and really destroying the bucket, I decided I'd use some vice grips to help me, and that worked very well. After loosening it with the vice grips, 
the plastic bucket came out pretty easily. Remember at this point the plaster is still kind of soft. After letting the foundry dry for a couple days I took my inch and three quarter hole saw and drilled a hole about an inch up from the bottom at an angle angling towards the bottom of the foundry. This will make sure that if for some reason your crucible leaks out aluminum it doesn't run out of the tube. Here you can see that the inch and a half steel pipe fits in nicely. It's a little loose but that's okay. We want it to be a little bit loose so it doesn't crack the foundry if something moves. Uh, and here's a view of the angled hole pointing down. Next we're going to make the insulated lid for our foundry. We're going to cut off a bucket just below the handle. This is the bucket that I used for mixing the dry mix earlier. Uh, we're going to mix enough dry mix to fill the removed ring of the bucket. Uh, we're going to use a mixture in the dry mix of one part vermiculite or perlite to two parts plaster of Paris. Uh, once you've mixed the plaster, you're going to dump it into the ring. Uh, then I tap the sides to let the, bu the bubbles come to the surface. I'm going to place the two U-bolts into the plaster and I'm using a stick to make sure that the cross piece of the U-bolt is down inside the plaster. This is going to be a handle to lift your lid, so you want to make sure they're down all the way. Uh, after they've set for a few minutes and things are starting to harden up, uh, you want to slide something through the U-bolt to lift them up off the bottom. I actually used a longer piece of inch and a half steel pipe uh, to lift them up and make sure they were in line with each other. Um, and then once it hardened, uh, you can remove your cross brace. Uh, you want to be careful because even though the plaster seems like it's hard, it's still not fully cured. Even though the plastic bucket is very smooth inside, the plaster still holds on very tight to it. Uh, so to make it easy to remove the ring, I heated it up a little bit with my propane torch and once it was hot, uh, it came right off. Uh, the next thing I did was drill a 3 inch hole through the cover. Uh, this will allow air to vent out and will also be a nice feed so I can drop aluminum into my crucible. Ah, nice fit. So the next thing is the setup for our air intake. First you'll see the 6 inch steel pipe and then the PVC adapter, a short piece of PVC and duct taped on a hair dryer. You will want to support your hair dryer at the angle so the weight of it doesn't break your foundry. Uh, the first thing you're going to do when you're getting ready to light your foundry is put some charcoal on the bottom enough to bring your crucible up to the almost up to the top. Then you're going to fill uh, about halfway up your crucible with charcoal and light it. Here I used my propane torch. Uh, you could use regular charcoal lighter or even match light charcoal. Uh, once the charcoal is going, you'll fill the foundry to the top with charcoal and place the lid on top. Next you're going to turn your hair dryer on to low setting. You will not ever need to use the high setting. Uh, the low setting will produce plenty of heat. Uh, once your crucible is starting to glow, you can start adding cans or other aluminum items. And as you can see, it doesn't take long for them to melt and turn into aluminum. Be very careful when adding these cans or aluminum to the top uh, because the heat coming out of that top hole is amazingly hot. This foundry can actually be picked up on the outside when it's burning and the cover can actually be picked up by the U-bolt by hand without gloves. Definitely use gloves because it's much safer. Here you can see I'm pouring uh, the melted aluminum into my muffin tray to make ingots for use later. Uh, this works really well for a dross-free pour later. Uh, and here is a view of the finished foundry. Thank you very much for joining me on how to build an aluminum foundry. Goodbye.